hey, uh, I am super excited about uh, what's about to happen. Um, I have a couple of alumni here from Grain Valley High School, um, one of which I had as a student, uh, another one who's a friend, and um, just excited to hear what they have to say about their path. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Coach Small. Um, and this is my 14th year here at Grain Valley, um, and I can go all the way back to 2015. That's the year I graduated, but I think you were there before year. then. And I was definitely, yeah, I was definitely there before then, but I uh, had you in class as a sophomore, I believe. Yeah, um, probably in twice. Biology, and then again in AP Biology, yes. I believe. Sounds um, about right. And uh, But I'll, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves, um, and we'll, we'll just have a conversation tonight. Awesome. Well, I'm Zach uh, Griesinger. I graduated from Grain Valley in 2015. I went to UMKC for college and I majored in computer science. After that, I got an internship then job at Cerner, now Oracle, and uh, worked there for about two years. And now I work at a financial tech company off a state line called C2FO. And I've been there for four years. Um, and my, um, I'm a staff engineer there. So, yeah. Love that. Cool. Uh, Doug Porter, nice to meet everybody. And <clears throat> Um, graduate of Grain Valley from 2007, so been a little while, uh, but good to be back, um, shoot, 17 years ago, walking across the stage, but since then, went to Northwest Missouri State, studied business and econ, uh, ended up getting an internship opportunity at Cerner in Kansas City, which was booming like crazy at the time, uh, got to do some really cool stuff, went full-time there, and uh, kind of the rest is history, been there for almost 12 years, now Oracle, um, Oracle Health, and yeah, been there 12 total years as a sales manager, so had a lot of foundational learnings here at Green Valley, which is really cool to kind of see it all come together. And uh, Doug, you mentioned something there that just sparked my interest, you know, as a, as a staff member here. Um, so I thought I'd pose this, like, from both of your guys' perspective, what did Green Valley High School mean um, to your futures and then now you know what you're doing now but thinking back then like what things helped set you up uh, to be as successful as you guys are uh, as you sit here today yeah I can go I mean yeah, go I think you had the teachers and it obviously wasn't all the teachers in every class but you had those particular classes where you really connected with your teacher and then you you would spend time outside the classroom because you were passionate about it like I think back to like photography and wood shop and some of these things that I don't use today but they really focused me in learning and school and I found a passion for them and then it ended up you know helping me find other passions newspaper right other things where I could hone my skills in writing and it just it keeps you in the academic curriculum right where you're not getting into trouble or going and doing something you shouldn't be doing so uh, I think that helped me immensely I was probably a laundry um, when I was in high school, and it, it helped me focus in on, hey, college is something I need to do. It's something I need to focus on. Let's go take action to, to make that happen. Yeah, that's. Uh, I really like the question. I think there's for me there's two two kind of things that uh, really just kind of change what I consider like my trajectory um, since high school. And the, I think the first one this is it's going to sound plant like I'm a plant, but I think it was definitely like AP courses mm -hmm. because I saved a, a whole year of college. I got I got three years, I got a bachelor's degree, um, and that was almost exclusively because I had enough AP credits to skip a whole a whole year. So that saved me uh, over $10,000 in student loans. It got me into the workforce a year earlier, uh, and you know, let me start my, build my career from an even younger age. And I think additionally, uh, just from some of, the, some of the skills I learned in Grain Valley, I, one of the things that uh, was very useful to me in my career was the like ability to communicate and present and talk in front of groups of people and it's something that is uh, pretty rare uh, I would say in terms of like software engineering field um, and it was like something I think back to like all the things I did in high school uh, very similar to what uh, Doug said of like things that I don't even use today like I was in band it was a big part of my life uh, I was you know drum major doing all these things and like I don't really use any of that today but it taught me a lot of how to like speak in front of people how to um, be in front of uh, a crowd, how to talk, how to do things like this, honestly, without being, you know, so crippled by uh, anxiety or how I'm talking that, like, I was, you know, I f fall flat on my face. Yeah. Uh, so those, I think those soft skills that I learned were, like, just incredibly uh, invaluable for me. That's, that's awesome. I, 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 we kind of joked about this. I feel like this is, like, the late night talk show. Uh, <laughs> spill yeah. all the, the juice, uh, all the tea. Um, so 
here, one thing that makes me, that I just wonder, um, why come back here? Like, I mean, you walk across the stage, right? Uh, 20, 2007, 2015, you walk across the stage and it's like, a, you know, I, been around seniors for a long time. It's like, I'm out of here. Like, I am out of GV. I want to go, but you guys come back, right? We, we love seeing you. You're here. Um, what, what draws you back? Um, you know, what, what excites you about what you see happening? Um, those types of things. I can go first. Yeah, go for yeah. it. Uh, so, like, I think what, one of the reasons that I like coming back is um, I like to see, you know, not only how the schools progressed, um, and then, but really to, like, talk to the students and, like, see what is going on uh, because I like I'm in a position right now where I I will do interviews with with young people coming out of college and it's it's, it's I like to know uh, I like to see you know what kids are interested in right and like what does the next generation kind of look like um, and a, another thing that I enjoy coming back is like when I was here there was no computer science curriculum really mm -hmm. um, we had there's a few project lead the way classes yeah. uh, but I really felt behind when I went into when I went into college. And I was like, I've never written a line of code in my life, and I'm going into college with all these other, um, all these other students who, you know, maybe went to other districts who did, you know, I felt was ahead of me at the time in terms of that kind of skill. So coming back and seeing like just how much it's grown, like even in the room that we're sitting in right now, being in the high school, yeah. is just it's kind of insane, and it's really a, a, it's kind of an inspiring thing to think back about, like you know, like all of like coming back to help build the things that I didn't have uh, is is really rewarding, I think. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I, great answer. I'd piggyback the same thing and probably just add that Mr. Jakes is probably the biggest reason that I keep coming back. Um, he was an influential educator for me. Um, was I think his first year was my freshman year of, of high school, so had a lot of uh, learning experiences that he definitely uh, gave me along the way, and I had his classes almost every semester the entire way, so he was kind of that continual... Uh, mentor for me and you know I look at what he's built here along with others but I think he really led um, a lot of what's happened at Grain Valley over the last you know 15 plus years almost 20 years um, it's incredible you know Grain Valley is leading in the Kansas City area as far as what they offer and the you know different experiences that students get to have while just being a part of their classroom or, or doing extracurriculars there was no robotics there was no newsroom there was no you know AP courses didn't exist we had dual credit right so there's just been so much evolution and and I do enjoy coming back to see what's new what's next what's been built what's being added um, and you know to Zach's point I interview people who have are looking for jobs on a regular basis and it is good to kind of connect on what is the next generation learning what do they come to the table with what is their experience in high school and, and college translating to the workforce so I think that's what keeps me Kind of motivated to come back and obviously see what you guys are doing here yeah um you both indicated uh that you're part of the hiring process right mm -hmm. and so i'm interested um what advice um what things do you look for like since you know you've got that person sitting across from you all nervous and you're you're interviewing that that potential new hire um what what impresses um, what do you look for what um what what advice would you have for kids that are about to potentially go start doing that I mean, I would just say, I, I look for people who over-prepare, right? Because it, it shows that they care. It shows that they actually put in the time. Um, so there are some, you know, it sounds trivial, but you, you test people, right? You say, hey, you know, what do you know about my company? What did you what did you read about the position? What do you already, you know, you try to see, was this just uh, through in an app, see what happens, shotgun approach, or is this a, hey, I actually want to work here and I've done the research and I've actually put in the time uh, to tailor my resume and do the things that, will put me above everyone and um, I don't think people always realize when you get into some of the more well-known companies and bigger operations you're competing against hundreds of candidates mm -hmm. and no exaggeration I mean hundreds of candidates and in, in today's world post-COVID remote location right you're competing against people all over the country mm -hmm. so it just it creates a much more competitive nature and so as much as I was I would always love to hire somebody local I'm maybe going to hire somebody who's better, you know, virtual. So you, you really have to do that approach of step up your game is kind of the only way I would say it. Um, you can't walk into interviews without preparing. You can't walk in without researching. You can't walk in without, you know, doing some dry runs because um, you're probably not going to impress. Um, and those first impressions, it seems superficial, but they are very impactful um, because it's the same thing. I would say if, 
hey, I'm going to introduce you to, to a client. If you have a bad first impression, they're not going to like you, right? So they mean a lot. Um, and it shows what, you, what, what the job or what the position means to you. If you over-prepare and you do all the research, it'll just come naturally during the interview. Yeah, I second almost everything. And it's kind of odd that like a lot of people don't expect that, like, well, you're hiring engineers, right? Do you really care about all the things that a sales like hiring manager is going to care about? And like it's weird to say, but those first impressions of like, the way someone communicates is like the most important thing for me. Like you, you can train somebody on technical knowledge. You can train them on, uh, you know, like what tool you use at, you know, your job versus another job. Uh, but really like the one thing that like, I feel like it's harder to teach is like how someone communicates their personality, what they're like and those soft skills that they're bringing to the table. And so, yeah, like it does sound superficial, but honestly, like if you come into an interview and I ask you like, what do you know about my company? And you can give me a, you know, a great well thought out answer that shows that you put in time to this, you know, to this interview, like then that, like that goes a long way. And, and if you can, if you feel that, if you fall on your face kind of on that question, you're kind of like, it's kind of over I, at that point, which is sad to say, you know, like the first 10 minutes of the interview, but those are just crucial. And like communicating, I think is like the biggest problem. And, you know, I've given interviews with people that, you know, can, can barely talk or barely like um, express what their ideas. Like, and that's just a very crucial part, I think of, of, I mean, engineering culture in general. Yeah. Uh, so, like, to, like to me, that's that's the most important thing I'm looking for. Is just, um, and yeah, like I said, it's weird to say, you know, engineering. You'd think that we'd be focused drilling down on technical skill or knowledge or something like that, but really, you know, we care about the same things that mm -hmm. Doug cares about. It's like we we care that you have, we care that you know you can talk, that you came prepared, that you you know are respecting us enough to show that you um, put some time in. Yeah. And and I would add, if I could just pay back quick, I think those soft skills are. And at least I've noticed this, they are somewhat harder to find as broadly, right? I think COVID, there's a lot of things that have played factors, but I do think people need to work on those, you know, yeah. or at least try to hone them and, and exercise them as much as they can. Because if you're not speaking to people in a group setting, if you're not selling yourself or selling some idea, you do lose that skill. And, you know, you know, even in tech, right, you're trying to sell the timeline, you're trying to sell yeah. the... the differences in problem solving, right? Like there's, you're constantly selling your ideas or yourself. And so that needs to come through in the interview process as well. So um, yeah, just a lot of things that people say, hey, look, I, I look great on paper. It's like, well, how do you actually have, yeah. what are those soft skills that you have uh, to carry on the job? Yeah. So uh, not to derail it too far, but just from the biomed perspective for the courses I teach, I've had the opportunity to talk to people about these these situations in that field and what's really interesting is we have a lot of you know uh, researchers that like that's their thing right they like to get in there and they like to do that and it's like me and my whatever I'm researching right and like the outside world whatever and then that that social skill of, of being able to communicate whatever it is they're researching uh, becomes difficult and so now you're asking for funding and you're asking to communicate like your findings and all these things and some really, really, really amazing things are dying or not being able to, to rise to the surface just because of the lack of communication. Um, and I find that like very intriguing. When you talk about medi medication that's up and coming, you know, like in clinical trial or whatever, and you're asking for funding from companies or whatever, it could come down to just the fact that you don't communicate it well um and i, I don't know that that just a whole a mm -hmm. whole another yeah like there's little there's little pieces of it that are like very crucial like the a good example is like in in tech there's like like they'll find vulnerabilities and the vulnerability will be published uh as like cve one two three four five six seven eight nine right <laughs> and it's like well no one knows what that means right but then like a marketing person will come in and it's like oh we're gonna call this meltdown or we're gonna call okay. it specter <laughs> yeah. right and then it's instantly you know you can see it on the news it's like specter and meltdown are a big yeah. deal and and like there's that that stuff is important because like you said it's like it's how you get it's how you get to that like second order action of um how you get past you know like the research and how you you know bring other people to the table yeah when you think about like the kids that we're talking to here and the strengths that they bring. Um, and I, I wonder, I mean, you all aren't too far removed. I mean, we're, we're talking, we start to see the generational thing <laughs> start to happen and you're like, whoa, man, I'm, I'm old. Uh, but um, I, I wonder from your perspective, when you are doing those interviews or when you, when you see those things, what strengths is this generation bringing that maybe others didn't have? Um, and, and how can they maybe leverage those or exploit those um, in, in either your career or others that you, you think of. I, I don't know 
if I'm communicating that well. <laughs> I've <laughs> talked about communication, but yeah, I mean, I, I think this generations, and this is probably cliche, but they're like super tech savvy, right? Like they get all technology, they get like self promotion, like they know how to put themselves out there and make a really great resume, and you know make their LinkedIn page great, like all the things that you're like, oh, this candidate looks really good. And then you get an interview and you're like, I would never hire this person, right? So, mm. you know, I do think they bring a lot of good qualities and they're you know, very educated. They have great awareness. Um, but it's, again, it's the soft skills. It's that networking. It's that like, you know, if I ask you a question, answer the question and don't like go down a tangent of something else you wanted to tell me, like, yeah. It's just some of that stuff that I think they could work on, but I think the generation is, again, tech-savvy, very good at self-promotion, um, and they've learned a lot at a young age as far as, like, AP courses and things that, like, I never had the ability to even uh, dive into. I mean, I think of some of the things that I learned in college. That's being taught here, like, you know, even starting in, like, freshman and, and sophomore courses. So I think the aptitude is much higher, um, but it that's – it's that way everywhere. So they yeah. got to kind of rise to the occasion or raise the bar themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would agree. It's the, there's a lot of like the tech skills are just on another level of just proficiency. And I think like another, another thing that is an advantage is just the, like the litany of stuff that kids today have to deal with is e even I thought was a lot for when I was in high school, but even now it's like, it's like even more than that. Right. Of all the, different things going on, you know, in the world or dealing with COVID, like all that, all those things are, uh, I think it's like a multitasking or maybe like, like multi, um, multimodal forms of like, uh, learning and teaching. Um, I think they're very good at. And so those, those are the things where like, um, you know, like if you can, if you can like record a video and you can do it without, you know, like weeks of prep, and you can just kind of do it off the cuff and you're really good at that. Like that's a very valuable skill. And you might not think of it as like a, well, when I turn the camera on to record, I can just kind of talk. Um, and I'm, you know, but it's, again, it's those soft skills that I think a lot of, a lot of, uh, young people today, like actually build a lot of those skills. Part of it being like, you know, always on, always recording, always, mm -hmm. there's always, you know, a phone going. Right. And so they get, you get kind of this, this good, uh, good cadence of communication, I think. Um, but yeah, I think ultimately the, 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 the technology, technological skill is just wild yeah and, and i would just add problem solving which is huge in any really industry yeah. but i i see a lot more critical thinking which is probably counterintuitive because of like the you know TikTok and all this other stuff that's distracting people but i do notice and, and maybe it's just a subset of candidates that i talk to but i do notice like a more mature a more like these people are better prepared or, or just like at a very young age, they're ready to te step right into a career. Whereas like, you know, at 22, 23, I was not really in that mindset. Yeah. So I do think there's some maturity there. And I think COVID played maybe some role in that, but it, there's just, there's a more awareness and more like confidence in their abilities. And like, I'm ready to move into this and this is what I want to do. And, mm -hmm. and that problem solving that they're able to convey uh, to me as a, as a interviewer. So a lot of good skills that they bring. Um, it's just the soft skills I think yeah. that sometimes lack and I wonder if it's like a little bit of the globalization of like they have to kind of drink from a fire hose from a young age. And it's like that <laughs> so gives much. them this ability to like, okay, I have like all this fire hose to drink from, but I can, I'm really good at distill, distilling it. I think the, the candidates, the younger candidates that I'm really impressed by, they're always very hungry. They're very good at like zeroing in on, on problems and um, I like taking in all of the, all of this, the signals that are coming in from everywhere and, you know, figuring out what's important. Yeah. So I, I love all of this. Like I'm, I'm over here just eating all this <laughs> up because I, I, you know, I, I get to have these conversations, like I said, with other CTE members or, or community people that have come in to talk to us about biomed things. But um, it's so interesting that it doesn't matter the field. I feel like a constant or a, a very a theme that just starts to develop is kids are moldable, um, right? They have the ability to kind of like adjust and, and take on these, these new things, right? Um, and the, the fact that, like you said, they're, they're con it's, it's on all time. At all times it's on. Um, but my, my, I guess my question is, what do you guys do maybe on your own time um, to kind of like <laughs> to have a little bit of that self 
uh, pour into yourself, right, a little bit, um, so that, you know, because I feel like sometimes, like, in today's world where it's so fast, um, sometimes we forget to do that. Um, I mean, what do, you, what do you all think about that? Go for it. I, so I have, like, I am uh, a big fan of, like, walks or exercise in general to, like, get yourself out and, like, tr like one of the things that we like to joke about in like my field is like you, you you have like these walks where you like solve all your problems without even like realizing it, right? Or like you'll have a, you'll be stuck on a really hard bug or technical problem and you'll like wake up in the middle of the night or you'll be in the shower, you'll be like doing something completely <laughs> like, you're like, I, did, I wasn't even thinking about work, right? And you, you know, it comes to you, right? You have that eureka moment. And the, um, I think like to, to kind of unplug from that is like very important, right? And one of the things that I really love about like at least my, my job is like, I have a lot of flexibility and like, it's not like a butt in the chair, eight hours kind of thing. It's like, I have, uh, my, my CEO talks about like work-life harmony and, mm -hmm. and, and sort of like that concept of like, yeah, if you need to go on a walk for an hour, right? Like just, just go on a walk, you know, and come back, like work later, like, or, you know, maybe like take off and like go to a coffee shop, right? And just kind of sit there and take it all in. And I, I think that that's really valuable. Um, and and to back to the previous question a little bit, I think that, Young people today are very a lot more in tune with yeah. their their need to prevent themselves from burning out mm -hmm. than uh, previous generations, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, I, like that's one of the things. Like I think just think like exercise or you know even like to doing something with your mind that isn't work is very helpful to like kind of reset you. Whether that's you know reading, um, video games, uh, sports, exercise, like all those things are like really good at at least for me like kind of un unblocking the problem that's kind of stuck yeah, yeah. Um, I got two kids so that's my distraction uh, <laughs> most days but yeah I mean I, I think exercise and just moving right like it's his next point I mean there's a lot of times where I'm a lot better thinker when I'm walking I'll just yeah. pace my office or walk the halls right um, it just some about it gets the juices flowing and it keeps you kind of thinking and you don't even realize you're doing it um, shower thoughts. I mean, I yeah. <laughs> I kind of just conceptualize my day when I'm showering and just kind of thinking through like, oh, here's actually how I wanted to. S I couldn't think of this yesterday, but this here's how I need to phrase this, or here's how we need to go about this. So, yeah, it's just it's taking a step back from the day to day and just having a chance to kind of high level. What are we What are we trying to do? What do I need to go accomplish? Um, and then I think it's networking with colleagues um, is where we get a lot of reprieve from the day-to-day -day kind of hustle and you get the chance to step back and say, hey, how are we doing on this thing? Do we need to do this differently? Do we need to bring in more different people for a different perspective? Um, those opportunities that we actually um, go in the office weekly, so we have that opportunity to collaborate where you don't always get to do that uh, virtually for, for folks who are doing virtual office work. So um, I find that collaboration to be refreshing. I have my one-on-ones with my team on those days we go in because we get that one-on-one -on -one time um, and yeah, so the, a lot of problems get solved in person, surprisingly. Um, I know video conference and virtual works popular and trendy, but uh, and nice, to be honest, it's nice not to sit in traffic. Um, but there's something about that in person, even if it's you know semi-frequently, that solves a lot of problems that you can't do virtually. Yeah. I mean, I, I, when we started this conversation, I didn't think we'd, we'd figure out a way to work in you guys taking showers, but <laughs> we, we made it. It's key. Uh, we, we got we it. Made it. Uh, so I, th and this is the, the last one for me, and then if you guys have anything else to add, I'd love to hear it. But um, you, you mentioned uh, the importance of something that I remember being at a graduation. It wasn't one of my graduations, but you know, throughout your life, you get to sit through uh, countless Too many, probably. <laughs> And uh, there was a speaker, uh, Brian Busby, is who it actually was, and he uh, stood up in front of everybody, and he, you know, had his remarks or whatever, and they had already gotten their diplomas, and he was kind of sending them off, and he was like, oh, and by the way, those diplomas you just got, you might as well take them, have a good photo op, and just chuck them. Like, they mean absolutely nothing. Um, the number one thing uh, that's going to help you through life are the connections you make and the networking uh, that you have. So I just thought get your guys' perspective on something like that. In today's world where it is hundreds of applicants and you have uh, you have to separate yourself from the pack, like what um, what have you found networking? How have you found it to help you maybe in your own careers um, or uh, as the people that you hire or any, any thoughts on um, the importance of, of those relationships and that networking piece? 
Yeah, I, I would say, so I went to UMKC for college and I, I think I had, I, I don't exactly know, but somewhere it was like in the 50s range of people in my graduating class. And through my current company, who someone that uh, had just seen me give a presentation in class, they, that's the only interaction that this, me and this other person had ever had. And he reached out to me and was like, hey, we're hiring. Are you interested in a job? And I met with him at a bar and we had a few drinks and he was like, yeah, why don't you come meet the team? And that was basically it. Like there was, um, it was like all through referral. And since then I've worked with almost like six or seven of the people in my graduating class of 50 who've all come through my CGFO, my company. And so like just the percent there is kind of crazy when you think about it. And like one of the things I love about Kansas City is that it's somewhat of a small tight knit community. And I know a lot of people, I know a lot of, a lot of people that work at, you know, I know um, hundreds of people that work at Cerner. I know people that work at almost at any of the big companies around here. And in, with remote, that's sort of died down a little bit because people are kind of going all over the country. But the, uh, like, that, like, I would not be in the position I am today without just making an impression on somebody on a random presentation on a random Thursday in college, right? And so, like, I don't, it's really, it's really, <laughs> I know it's very unsatisfying to hear from like somebody where it's like, well, I just kind of randomly looked right. into it, <laughs> but it is just, it, it's how it works. Like just the people that you meet, the impressions that you make in any moment of any day could be the thing that, you know, connects you to someone who like, honestly changes your life or takes you, um, you know, skyrockets your career to wherever you want it to be. Yeah. I think to Brian Busby's point, um, the high school diploma is important but it's only foundational, right? It, it, it gets you just barely to the baseline expectation of what you should be doing, right, which is graduating high school. From there, you can do a lot of different things. You don't have to go to college, right? But in my experience, right, the college experience, which was fostered by my high school network that kind of drew me to the same university in Northwest, that then drew me to the same fraternity with these other guys, and then drew me to then Cerner at the time, right? Like, all these are progressional steps, and as you build community in each one of them, hopefully you're able to keep those connections and with technology that's become so much easier. And you know, I think to like LinkedIn is like my, I don't wanna say gold mine, but like if I needed a job or needed a contact or needed a foothold in an industry or had a question about something, I've got thousands of people that know me, that I know that I can work with, or they have you know six degrees of separation. They know somebody who knows somebody, right? So. I just think that power of the network goes undervalued in a lot of ways. And with technology, I mean, that is so powerful. Um, whether you find yourself laid off, unemployed, whether you find yourself looking for the next career step, um, whatever it is, that that opportunity on, uh, you know, you, with using your network to better yourself. And, and to your point, like, what are people doing in the job market? Like, if someone comes to me highly recommended from somebody I know, or at least somebody within the company, goes to the top of the top stack, of the right? Yeah. So I don't want to say that's everything because I've certainly met some people who are not <laughs> people I would hire, but I would say that's the minority. Most people, you know, they come highly recommended because they are good. They've got a good background. They've got a good reputation. Um, and that means a lot, right? Because when you're looking at 800 or not 800, 80, 100 plus candidates, I don't know anybody from anybody until I meet them, right? So if you got somebody who's recommended by a, a colleague or somebody you've worked with, um, it, it goes a long way. Um, to actually getting the interview, which is then their opportunity yeah, to sell themselves. Yeah, yeah. I think the. I, I don't know if, if you would corroborate this or not, but like, we like recently, you know, post job posting, and the first thing that we all do is like, okay, well, who in my LinkedIn network is looking for a job, yep. right? And who do I know? Like, and that's your first, your first kind of go to. Sometimes we don't even make it for much further than that. Like, we'll find someone, we're like, oh, we know them, or we'll rehire them. Like, they worked, they went to go work for a start. They may maybe did their own startup. And it failed, right? And then so like, oh, well, we'd love to have you back because, you know, you you, you were go. great. We already know. We, we can already vouch for you. Um, and, like, that's just, it's such an important thing. And, and like you said, like, the one of the recent job openings we posted, it had 100 applicants in the first day. Like, that's the first day. And we're, like, we're already kind of in too deep of, like, how many people that we can actually, like, call and screen and then interview and then hire. So, like, you have to have that. Like connection, I think is to yeah to Busby's point. It's like the connection is the your is the professional key. network, which I would I think people need to be familiar with that. You need to always be building your professional network, and I, I got told that early on in college, like you are here to get an education, 
but you're also here to build a professional network because when you get out of here, you may or may not have a job lead, you may need to lean on other people, you may need to lean on educators, right? And as I've continued on in my career, it's been invaluable. Um, and I've luckily stayed employed at the same place, so I haven't had to use leverage that too often, but you know, to Zach's point, there's been a lot of times where I've got an opening, I'm building a team, I, I know people who are hiring, and I lean on that network to help them and, and vice versa. It's the it's like the only asset you take with you, right? Your whole career, like that network is like you can you know you can build a team at a company, you can build software at a company, but that's going to stay with the company when you move on. But the thing that won't is like all the people that you met. It's pretty powerful when you think about it. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, well, Mr. Reuser, Mr. Porter, uh, honestly, we have a saying around here these days. It's called uh, One Valley, Valley Way. Um, and you guys definitely represent that. Um, and we love that, that you're out in the community doing great things um, and are willing to come back and, and share all that with us. Um, and uh, I definitely appreciate you all for your time and uh, even more so for the people that you are and how you represent us. So thank you for that. Um, let's